Shalom, this is your brother Tazar Ya'ama from Valdosta, Georgia, GMS, coming out with another weekly lesson, and I pray that it be edifying. But first of all, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekakadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of GMS for teaching us the true knowledge of these scriptures. I want to say Shalom and a heart to all the sisters and brothers that striving in the same true doctrine. Shalom. Today's lesson is more of a response to Apostle Gabor lesson about eloquent speaking. You know, that was one of my pitfalls. You know, I know for a fact that hey, I'm not the most articulate brother in our camp, you know, but I, I, I strive to do better, you know, and I, I keep striving, but then, but the lesson that he put out, um, it was not only edifying, it was a face booster, you know, to hear the apostles to say that, hey, it's not all about your eloquent speech, but about bringing out this truth. That's what really matter. And with that, my first scripture is going to be the book of Exodus, chapter 4, starting at verse 10. And Moses said unto the Most High Yahweh, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither herefore, heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Most High Yahweh said unto him, Who has made man mouth, or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the sin, or the blind? Have not I the, the, the Most High Yahweh? This is the Lord explaining, the Most High Yahweh explaining to Moses that, Don't sell me short, you know, hey, the mouth that uh, you call a slow speech, I made that. So, hey, don't be discouraged. Hey, have faith in me. And with that, I'm going to move to the book of Exodus. Same, same book, chapter 6, verse 12. And Moses spake before the, the, the Most High Yahweh, saying, Behold, the children of Israel have not hearkened unto me. How then shall, shall Pharaoh hear me, who am of uncircumcised lips? Once again, here's Moses. Not so much as down himself, but he he's denying the power thereof. Hey, the Most High Yahweh got control over your speech. Who are gonna resonate with? And you know, just who gonna receive it in general? You know, hey. Just open your mouth. He'll do the rest. And with that, I'm going to move to the book of Mark. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 32. Mark, chapter 7, verse 32. And they bring unto him one that was deaf, and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hands upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude. And put his fingers into his ears. And he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up into heaven he sighed and said unto him. Ephatios, that is, be open. 
and straightway his ears were open, and the strings of his tongue were loose, and he spake again. All praises to your howl by Hashem Yahushai. You know, it just says he made the deaf speak, hear, made them, him over a speech impediment, hey, made him able to speak, made the blind able to see, and just because we, we are not as eloquent or articulate as a lot of so-called men of the Lord uh, didn't graduate from uh, a highly prestigious university. Hey, that doesn't matter. The Most High is dealing with who he's dealing with. Not someone that has a piece of paper hanging on the wall that said that they this and they that. Hey, if the Most High ain't dealing with you, that piece of paper on the wall is no more than toilet tissue. And with that, I'm going to move to the book of Isaiah chapter 28. book of Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 11 and it reads for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people to whom he said this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the river to rest and this is the refreshing yet they will not hear Verse 13, but the word of the Most High Yahweh was uh, unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. They that might go and fall backwards and be broken and snared and taken. This is a concept that the Most High Yahweh has put in place that way. Everybody ain't going to be able to understand this, these scriptures. And, and that's by design. It wasn't meant for everybody. It was only meant for elected few to have the understanding of these scriptures. That's why John 3.16 got a lot of people, hey, confounded. And that's the number one scripture that Christians like to bring out to include everybody, hey, in the seat. Of the kingdom. John 3.16. And they have no understanding. Of what, what's really going on. And with that. I'm going to move to the book. Of. You know. Isaiah. Still in the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Here's the most high saying that, hey, your, the eloquence of your, of your voice has nothing to do with his word. Long as the word, or long as the truth of the scriptures come out, once again, that's all that matter. You don't, you don't have to be pronounced every word, hey, you know, with perfection. You know, everything has to be perfect. You know, the perfection is in the word itself, not the way that hey you pronounce it. Or how, how you articulate, articulate it. Hey, it's just the word itself. And with that, I'm going to go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 
chapter 19, verse 14. 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Yahweh, my strength and my redeemer. And I'm going to read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord Yahweh. How can these words out of your mouth and the meditation of your heart be accepted in, in his sight? Hey, speaking the truth of these scriptures. That's what makes it acceptable. The truth of these scriptures. And with that being said, I'm going to move to the book of First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter two and verse thirteen. First Corinthians chapter two verse thirteen. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man wisdom teaches. I'm gonna read that again. First Corinthians chapter two verse thirteen. Which thing also we speak, not in the words which man wisdom teaches. You know we. Get, you know, indoctrinated by this man's teachings. You know what what he what he say that is. You know the the standard. You know of I guess. Being uh, eloquent, you know, um, somehow put in a status above everybody else. Once again, as I said, because of a piece of paper that says you this or says you that or something that the so-called white man has classified as a the standard of exorcism. And with that, I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13 again. Which thing also we speak, not in the words which man wisdom teaches, but which the hope Rekakadosh teaches. That's the true teacher. Hey, that's the true professor. Hey. That's the real uh, PhD or whatever other alphabets you want to put at the end of your name. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You know, if these things, uh, if the word of the Most High Yahweh is spiritual, hey, what else do you need? It doesn't have to be eloquent said, as long as it's the truth. Once again, that's all that matters. And with that, I'm moved to the book of John, chapter 10. John, chapter 10, starting at verse 27. Salaki. Started the book of John, chapter 6 and 63. Chapter John, John, chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickens, the flesh profit nothing. It's the word that quickens. How you pronounce it. Or mispronounce it, hey, it's still gonna have the the effect that it's supposed to have, because it's the word. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. I'm gonna read that again. 
Matter of fact, I'm going to start from the top. John chapter 6, verse 6 to 3. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Hey, these words is the living water. It's the water that you never thirst for. It's the bread. And with that, I'm going to move to the book. Stay in the same book. John chapter 10, verse 27. The book of John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. You know, this this is Yahweh Shah saying that his sheep hear his voice. So when these words coming out, you know, they once again, they may not be, you may not be able to bring them out so eloquent as uh, orator, orator that's been Subjected to Esau's school of silly knowledge, so that's what it is. And you know, as the apostle brought out, you know, people have a tendency to overlook us because we don't come from a prestigious seminary school or some. The theological background that you know has a status symbol or been characterized as a top notch school of higher learning okay. the word itself is the school of higher learning the words of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. And with that, I'm going to move to the book. Uh, John. Back to the book of John. Chapter 6. And I'm going to read it again. This is the book of St. John. Chapter 6, verse 6 to 3. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profit nothing. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And as, as I said earlier, hey, as long as the word is coming out and it's the truth of the scriptures, that's all that matter. You don't have to be uh, elo uh, eloquent speaker that hey, can just make the words jump off the page. If it's the words of your how about Shem I was shy, they're gonna jump off anyway. And they're gonna <laughs> they gonna come back for it. And with that, I'm gonna close out by saying all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rikakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders for teaching us the true knowledge of these scriptures. I'm gonna say shalom and a heart to all the sisters and brothers that are striving in the same true doctrine. Shalom, Kram Yasharala, Shalom.